Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the Lightroom Blog channel. It's a bonus video today because Fujifilm have just launched the XRAW Studio program uh, which uses the camera as the processor to process your RAW files. Hey folks, so Fuji have brought out their promised app just for Mac only at the moment, it's XRAW Studio and it requires a firmware update to your camera to get it to work. I've got the Fuji X-T2, so here's where I got my firmware, and that brings up the firmware version 3. And here's where you can get the app from as well. You just click on Download Software and Firmware, and you will find it linked there. So like I say, it's Mac only at the moment. The Windows version is promised in February 2018. If you plug in the camera straight after doing your firmware, you will get an error inside the app, which tells you that you need to change the mode. And here is how you do it on the camera. So to do that, you need to go down to the spanner setting here, down to connection setting, and down to PC connection mode. It's currently on USB auto. And um, I see we now have USB shoot, tether shooting auto, USB tether shooting fixed. So this is different than previous versions. And we also have the one we need to select here, which is USB raw conversion. So click on that one and click OK and back to exit. So that is how you set that. So once you've changed this PC mode and you connect, you will be up and going. So let's have a look, which is my first look at XRAW Studio. So once you've connected a camera, you get this information telling you what the camera is and the firmware version and what level the battery is at currently. You have a source image folder here, which lets you choose from all sorts of stuff. So basically we can see that I'm on an external drive and I'm going through my folder system and I've selected this one. Now usually I do have these better named which means I will go back and name this after. Here's some shots. So I'm just going to select one of these. This is the big top during the Arts Festival. So I can do a little bit of work on this. We can see straight away you've got a histogram and it tells you what's going on with the colors as well. And you get all of the file information as well directly from the file. Now bear in mind this is on my drive, not on the camera. So I cre previously created some profiles and um, so you can save profiles. We'll do that in a second. But first, let's have a look at what's going on here. So the first thing I can see is that this is a little bit dark. So let me just brighten this a little bit, say plus one EV. See, that looks, okay, that's maybe too much. I'm going to go for two thirds. Now uh, we can come down here and we're on Velvia, so it's already pretty saturated. I could add some weak grain to it if I wanted. So that's actually quite nice. It does give you that kind of filmic look. If I wanted, I could actually go for a custom color temperature as well if I wanted. Um, so let me see what happens if I stick it to just daylight itself directly. Um, and do I want to warm? Let's see what this looks like if I warm it up a little bit. No, it's not going the way I want. But I might try a little trick that sometimes I do and try see what fluorescent looks like. And that's going to give a nice purple shade. Okay, I like what fluorescent is doing there. Um, so highlight tone, I can pull back highlights. And I can pull back shadows as well, which lightness the shadows. It's not darkening the shadows. Go minus two. Give me more detail. Uh, bump the color a bit. I'm going to go even more, be a little bit more extreme on this particular one. Yeah, there we go. I could also choose to increase sharpness. And maybe a small bit of noise reduction. And I'm going to have this come out as an Adobe sRGB file. I don't want to rotate the image, so that's fine. So I can see I've made this conversion. So I can now save profile. So I can call this profile sunset, for example. And if I click convert, right, it will make a JPEG. And so this is the JPEG here now. And so if I go back here, we can see that it is beside the original one. And if I click on this filter here, I can turn off the JPEGs to hide them. And just so you know that that will do that. And so now I gotta go look for it again. Uh, 45. So there we go. So we can see the converter one kind of stands out a little bit. There are other options here as well. And um, so you can sort by how the names are sorted. And I'm not 100% sure what those are. So I'm not going to pretend I do either. Um, so yeah, there are no tool tips though. So, but it's obviously some kind of filter on it as well. So we can see here that this profile is shown up here. So if I select the next image, say 46, and I go sunset, it will apply that profile the same way as a preset. 
So what this allows you to do is basically take any RAF file that you've already created and reapply the camera processing to the file, but on your computer. So it's very, very handy for that. So folks, I hope you like that. I think it's really interesting the way that they've approached this, that they're using the camera to do the actual conversion itself, which means that the conversions are exactly the same as the camera, as I think from a software emulation of what the camera will do and what the processor is doing. Is it the way forward? What do you think? Comment below and let me know. Like the video if you, you know, did like it, give me the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, hit the notification bell if you'd like to get notified. Folks, I do appreciate that you take time to watch these videos. And, you know, it means a lot to me because I know I get a small bit of money from monetization, but not that much because they keep turning off monetization on the new videos all the time. But that's how it is. But I'm still going to keep putting out videos. So, folks, thank you for taking the time to be the person to watch the video. And I will see you in the next one.